Now let's take a look at our next type of object, and that is our hyperlink object. A hyperlink object is another one of those objects that is used inside of a topic object. And it does different things depending on what output format you're working with. So with our print output, a hyperlink object is going to create a cross-reference, a footnote, or it will embed text. For your online output, it's going to create a jump link, a pop-up, or it can do expanding text using our DHTML options. And if you are using your hyperlinks for internet setup, you can create links to URLs, email addresses, or files on a web server as well. So different ways to use a hyperlink object depending on what your purposes are and what you plan on uh, publishing it to. Now here's an example of a hyperlink object. All right. And what you do with a hyperlink object is obviously tell AuthorIt what you would like to hyperlink to. Now, in our hyperlink object, we basically have two different areas to work with. So imagine there's a line right here between these two boxes, this box and this box, all right? Because you have an either-or situation going on. In the top area, you can associate your hyperlink with the topic object that you would like to create a cross-reference or a link to. All right, so we're doing a topic-to-topic -topic link in this case. And when you publish that topic-to-topic -to -topic link in your print output, you would get the page number that the topic object displayed on in HTML. It would be an actual hyperlink to that topic in your project. Now down at the bottom here, if you planned on using your hyperlinks for internet usage, you would type in the URL or mail to link or location of the file on the web server that you plan on creating the link to. All right, so depending on which one of these boxes you use, depends on the results that you get. So if you'd like to do a topic-to-topic -topic link, you would use the top area here. If you would like to create an internet link to a web address, a mail-to reference, or file on a web server, then you would use the bottom of the screen here. Now the hyperlinks are placed inside of a topic object. And if you look at a topic object, you can actually tell what text has a hyperlink applied to it because it will be in bright blue and be underlined. So this text here, setting your home coordinate, this text has a hyperlink object applied to it. All right, so again, you see that bright blue underlined text? That's your visual clue to know that there is a hyperlink object applied to that content. And actually, if you put your cursor in this text here, you'll see at the bottom of the window, author it is telling you what hyperlink object is applied. So in this case, hyperlink object set home coordinates with object code 748 is applied to that text set your home coordinates. Now when you publish that topic object to HTML, what you'll get in this case is a hyperlink to that setting home coordinates topic object. So this is a case of a topic to topic link where when you click this link, it will take you to that topic object. Now in your print output, what you will get is a cross-reference. And the cross-reference uh, looks a little bit something like this, where it will appear in brackets, and you can choose to include the word C if you'd like to. You can choose to include the topic heading of the topic that you're linking to, setting your home coordinates, on page, and then the page number. 
The page number is inserted automatically. Author, it keeps track of that information for you. You don't have to worry about inserting those page numbers yourself or keeping them up to date. They are automatically updated each time you publish that document. All right, so this is an example of what a cross-reference would look like. It's still the same hyperlink object, but it's been set up so that it is a hotspot for HTML and a cross-reference for your print output.